Hello everyone. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to thank Blender Foundation for this opportunity. And second, thank you all for coming to my TED talk. It's my first public appearance in my career, so I really appreciate it. And today we are going to talk about plants and how to create them in a most realistic way. So I hope you will enjoy the presentation and let's begin. A little bit about me, myself and I. My name is Ivo Pilc. I'm 24, I'm from Poland and I work at textures.com. I discovered Blender when I was about 13 years old and one of my bosses said that my brain was developing while I was sitting in Blender for dozens of hours every day. So here we are today. My brain became a functional unit, I hope. So Blender Foundation, thank you for that. Problem solving seems to be a pretty handy skill. All right. Um, throughout the years, I did a lot of 3D generalist freelancing. And, uh, but living in a small Polish mountain village made me really appreciate the nature. And that became the thing that I enjoyed doing the most. Bringing environments to life, trying to capture surrounding us flora in its full glory. And how it interacts with physical properties of our dimension. Um, I got really fascinated in, with plants, in how they grow, how they acquire the shapes that they have, how they distribute the leaves, and how mathematics is involved with them. Yeah. Uh, and over two years ago, um, I was hired by Textures.com to create plants. And that's when I became mastering and polishing the plant creation craft. I was mentored and still am by Jakub Dombrowski, the OG scanning artist that creates the best plants in the business. Uh, so huge thanks to him. I wouldn't be here today without his knowledge and wisdom. Yeah, so uh, let me show you some of the plants I did for textures.com and uh, some animations I did in Blender. So, thank you. Everything was obviously done in Blender and rendered in cycles. Um, and I liked those plants. They are pretty cool. I enjoyed creating them. But the time has come that I needed to create house plants and garden plants and overall a big leafed plants. And the difference between the wild plants and house plants is that Wild plants look good because they are in high quantity. L you look at the grass and you say, oh, it's a nice grass because there are a lot of grass blades. You look at the meadow and it looks very nice because uh, there are a lot of little weeds and uh, all those little plants. But house plants, on the other hand, are a living status of our houses. They need to look beautiful on their own they need to be very realistic and convincing. So I knew that I needed a new workflow that 
will allow me to create those beautiful house plants. So, I needed to ask myself one question. Oops. What makes plants realistic? How to make every leaf, petal, flower exceptional? What is the secret because the nature's magnificence? So, let's try to break that down. We will analyze some real life photos of plants. So, first thing, size variation. Every leaf have a different color on the front side and on the back side. Those sides also are varying in physical proportion, proportions like uh, roughness and normal. Next thing is the displacement. We have those lower frequency details like bigger curves and uh, shapes, the overall silhouette of the leaves. And we have higher frequency details like uh, those small little intricate details on those crevices that tend to be different on the front side as well as on the back side. And the stem. There is no faking, no transition. The stem is just connected into the structure of the leaf. Like in the weird world, the stem is connecting the vo water into the veins. So we can just take a plane, a cylinder, shove it inside and voila. And the light transmission. Plants look beautiful because they are transmitting the light. So there is a depth dependency. Uh, the thicker parts of the leaf are getting much less light penetration. They are much dimmer, while the thinner parts of the leaves are much more illuminated, much stronger light penetration is happening there. And uh, there is also a scattering inside. So if we have a uh, area of the, of the leaf that is casted by the light and there is a shadowed area, there will be a little transition fr from the lighted area to the shadowed area. So there is this scattering and there is also is also determined by the angle of entry. So if we have a leaf that is facing the sun and this leaf have a, like those crevices, the sides of those crevices will be facing the sun at an angle and they will be, there will be much less light penetration, there will be dimmer, but this is also a depth dependency. It's like an, uh, the sky on the atmosphere when it's lower, it's is less strong, it's weaker, because uh, it has to penetrate much more of the atmosphere. Yeah, so given all those four points that were missing from my workflow, I needed to find some techniques that would allow me to create those beautiful double-sided leaves that will have this side variation and a beautiful light transmission. So let me show you what I came up with. Yeah, and this method is actually pretty simple and I'm sure someone already did it, but I couldn't find anything about uh, it in the internet. Like I searched 
every 3D software forum and couldn't find how to make a double-sided leaves. So I just called it double-sided modeling and I'm using it every day to create plans. So let's try to break down this workflow. We have a front and back PBR textures, so we need to have a front side and a back side with different textures. So how can we achieve this? First thing is to get an atlas, a set of PBR textures with front side and back side of the leaves. And textures.com has an amazing library of those. The resolution is often beyond the 10K, and I just love working with those textures. So, when we have an atlas, we need to model the front side, and the back side is quite simple. You just duplicate the front side, go into a UV shaders editor, and uh, just align the UVs with the backside texture of the leaf. So, given we duplicated the front side, the front side and back side has the same geometry. So, we can place them on top of each other and just stitch the sides together, leaving a little distance between them, so we have a little volume inside the leaf. And there we have it, a working double-sided leaf. Told you it's pretty simple. So now, displacement. This is something that brings the realism to the next level. So, we need a height texture, but if we would take this height texture right now and apply it to our double-sided leaf, it would complete in a, it would result in a complete mess. The, it would explode, the, the edges would go crazy. So, we need to count down the edges. And we can do that by applying a 128 grayscale color uh, onto the edges. So, what is this color? A grayscale color of, with value of 128 represents a midpoint in displacement in 3D softwares. So, wherever on the texture is uh, this color, the software sees that there is no displacement happening. So, if we want to cancel the displacement on the edges, we need to pour this color onto them with a uh, gradient manner. Next thing, we need to bring down the lower frequencies. So, we can use high pass for it, that is available in 2D softwares. It's bringing down the, those lower uh, frequency, bigger shapes, while remaining the details. And there we have it, a working displacement on a double-sided leaf. And while we are uh, talking about the displacement, it's also uh, worth mentioning about the topology flow. Um, if we would take a leaf that has a very simple topology, like we see on the left side, there are horiz horizontal and vertical lines, and we would apply a displacement to it right now, there would be a lot of jaggeding happening and a shading issues. While on the other side, you see, I tried to follow the structure of the leaf, follow those patterns that are created by the displacement, and there are far less uh, shading issues. So, subsurface scattering, this is something that I was really excited about. Because, frankly, I don't like translucency shader in Blender. But, the subsurface scattering is just amazing in Blender. It works beautifully with plants. So, let's try to see uh, the differences between the translucency and subsurface scattering. We can see that on the right side, uh, the translucency in making the leaf look like a sheet of paper. The light just goes uh, in through the area uh, that the light is casted on, and there is no scattering inside. While on the other side, we can see that subsurface is just beautifully scattering inside, illuminating the whole leaf. It's making the whole leaf look alive. So, translucency setup is great for high quantity. Uh, plants, like the grass blades or uh, the weeds. Uh, we won't see those little differences in the uh, light. And it's also fast. But often because something is fast, it's also not realistic. And that's why we have subsurface scattering. It isn't coming uh, right off the box, it isn't coming uh, to, to be working uh, with plants. 
I think the default settings are meant for the skin shader because it has those this reddish tint. But if we will change the um, the uh, the radius, uh, or actually, um, if we will change the radius value to to one. Uh, and uh, change the uh, subsurface scattering, uh, scattering settings from uh, radius to crystals and burly, it just looks amazing on plants. So, it's realistic. The light is casted on onto the leaf and scatters inside. It is also thickness dependent, like we were uh, analyzing earlier, um, but it's also slower. You know, perfection has its cost. And there are less textures needed. You don't need the translucency and alpha texture. And the stem. Because we have a um, front side and a back side, we can just make a hole in the back side, take a cylinder, connect it, and there we have it connected uh, leaf with a stem. And the subsurface scattering can make the things happen. So, for any of you that wanted a more technical and detailed presentation, believe me, I would do too, but the 20 minute mark is pretty harsh. So, I, fortunately enough, I created tutorials covering this whole workflow. Um, those are the written article tutorials, because I was wondering if I should make a video tutorial, but uh, I kind of don't like the video tutorials. You have to rewind the video, trying to find the uh, thing that we're missing, and uh, the written tutorials, on the other hand, uh, you have everything laid down, organized, uh, and it's much simpler to use, uh, at least for me. So, I created uh, tutorials that are co covering this whole workflow from, from the uh, topology, modeling the leaf, bending it by using curves. I know a lot of people don't like curves because they are uh, kind of misleading and uh, can go crazy, but uh, I try to explain <coughs> them very well. There are weight painting, uh, advanced modifier setups, relations constraints. Mm, there is tons of secret knowledge. And we have made them for free on textures.com. So if if you want to create a beautiful plant, uh, I would highly encourage you to try those tutorials. But why would I encourage you to create a beautiful plant? Not only because uh, plant creation is a fun process in itself, but um, there is something with plant creation. I realized something that when I was getting better and better at creating plants, um, my skills improved in different branches of 3D. Um, it's like knowing the, how nature is made and knowing the tools and 3D principles, how to recreate it, gives you skill in different branches of 3D. Like we can see in, people are uh, mimicking and um, uh, inspired by nature in very different branches, like engineering and uh, uh, architecture. So, this is something uh, really awesome. Like, creating plants is one of the hardest things in 3D, and if you can harness it, uh, it gives you power. So, uh, special thanks to Zielony Parapet. Um, they allowed me to use some of their pictures uh, at the beginning when we were analyzing the plants. Um, those are the song credits. And if you have enjoyed the content I uh, showed you today, uh, you can check out my art station and uh, textures.com Instagram when I try to uh, post uh, some benchmarks and cool presentations uh, about the plants and some other stuff. So, I wanted to thank you all for coming uh, and uh, wanted to uh, thank my amazing girlfriend for cheering me with every plant that I make. And special thanks to Jakub Dombrowski for mentoring me and uh, our boss, Mike Stark, for keeping us motivated with memes. Um, <laughs> and I love my mom and dad. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>